This is Your Anxiety Toolkit, episode number 279. Welcome to Your Anxiety Toolkit. I'm your host, Kimberly Quinlan. This podcast is fueled by three main goals. The first goal is to provide you with some extra tools to help you manage your anxiety. Second goal, to inspire you. Anxiety doesn't get to decide how you live your life. And number three, and I leave the best for last, is to provide you with one big fat virtual hug. Because experiencing anxiety ain't easy. If that sounds good to you, let's go. Welcome back, everybody. Today on your Anxiety Toolkit podcast, we are talking about self-compassion. We're doing a self-compassion check-in. It's been a little while since we've checked in on how are you doing with your self-compassion practice. Now, today we have added a little meditation in for you just to supercharge your self-compassion practice. That is my agenda for today. We haven't done a ton of check-ins lately because life just seems to get away from us. <laughs> for those of you who do not know, in 2020, I wrote a book called The Self-Compassion Workbook for OCD. It was the joy of my life and the biggest challenge of one my life business-wise. It was such a huge agenda to have on my plate just as 2020 and COVID breakthrough. But I'm so grateful it's out. And when it was released, I had a lot, a lot of stuff out about self-compassion. And then I haven't checked in with you guys on how you're doing. So that's what today is about. Now, before we get into the episode, let's do the I did a hard thing for the week. We always check in and someone submits the thing that they've done that is hard because what we like to say is it's a beautiful day to do hard things. And today's is from anonymous. They said, I've recently been diagnosed with OCD and struggled my whole life with anxiety. Unfortunately, until now, I was never properly diagnosed until I was 45. I have started working with a new therapist and we are focusing on ERP. At first, I couldn't even tell her about my fears and intrusive thoughts. I have harm OCD among other various categories. Now, we are doing imaginals around some of the things I never thought I could even address, and I'm so proud of myself. I'm proud of you too. It is changing my life. I cannot tell you how important it is to get a proper diagnosis and never give up. You will get better. You just have to get the right help and be willing to do the hard things. Anonymous, you are giving me the chills. Now, for those of you who don't have access, like Anonymous has access to a therapist. If you don't have access to a therapist, we do have an online course called ERP School. And ERP School is an online course that will teach you how to practice ERP at home, in your pajamas, all the skills that you need to get you started. Now, it does require you to be self-motivated, but if you are self-motivated and you are ready to learn, head on over to cbtschool.com and you can get all the information there. All right, let's go over to the show. Okay, it's self-compassion check-in time. What does that mean? It means, how have you been treating yourself? Remember, self-compassion is ultimately treating yourself with the same compassion that you would treat somebody else. So if somebody else came to you and said, I'm struggling with A, B, and C, what would you say to them? How would you treat them? How would you respond to them? How would your body language change? Would your voice lower? Would your voice soften? Would you give them a hug if that was appropriate? Would you soften your eyes and let them know that everything was going to be okay and that you had their back unconditionally? That is how you would treat yourself. So my question is, how are you doing with this? I want you to check in regularly, way more regularly than we are here today. 
but I want you to check in with yourself preferably every day or multiple times a day and ask yourself, how am I doing? And then we're going to move into, and I know a lot of you remember this from previous episodes, but I want you to ask yourself the golden self-compassion question, which is, what do I need right now? What do I need? So let's do this together. Okay. I want you to find a comfortable place. If you're driving, please do not close your eyes. You may listen along. If you're not driving, you may close your eyes. You may rest your shoulders. You may bring a gentle smile to your face. And I want you just to slowly bring your attention to your breath. And when I say breath, I don't mean the physical rise and fall of your chest. I want you to bring your attention to the air that is going in and out of your body. You breathe in, the air goes into your lungs, replenishes, restores you, and then you breathe out air. And I want you to become familiar with this air as it enters your body and exits your body, replenishing you, supporting you, feeding you. And as you bring your attention to this air, I want you to gently, slowly drop down into where you are and ask yourself, what is it that I need? right now. If you notice being bombarded by many, many thoughts, that's okay. Just tend to one at a time. Each one of them, each one of those thoughts gets a moment. And you are going to use your wise mind to decide which ones you're going to tend to. So as you ask yourself, what do I need right now? You may notice your mind sharing with you, I need rest, I need a moment, I need to laugh, I need food, I need to pee, I need water, I need to be kind to myself. And take one at a time and take stock in acknowledging non-judgmentally that that's what you need non-judgmentally, which means we're not going to judge that we need it. We're not going to treat ourselves poorly because we need it. We're just going to acknowledge that's what we need. Now, if you notice that your mind is coming up with other things like criticisms, a list of things to do, it might be telling you you should be doing something different or more productive. They're the thoughts that we maybe don't tend to. Because you're tending to those all day. Now is the time to check in for what do you need. Say, I'll be right with you later, thoughts. Right now, it's time to nourish me, to fill my cup so I can go and do those things later. So we breathe in air. And we breathe out air. And now we bring our attention to those needs and ask ourselves, is there anything we can tend to right now? Maybe the softening of your shoulders. Maybe to let go of the to-do list. Maybe to celebrate in the wins that you've had today or yesterday or whenever. What do I need? Sometimes it's to cry. Sometimes it's to feel our feelings. Sometimes it's to validate our own feelings. And that's our job, right? That's our job. What a wonderful opportunity and a wonderful job we have, which is to be our first line of support and care that we deserve that. 
Maybe you're surprised by what's showing up in what you need. Maybe you're surprised that you need something and it's something that you don't usually need. That's okay too. Just be curious and open to that voice inside you. Now, if you're struggling to identify what you need, I want you to just gently remind yourself that the wish to be compassionate towards yourself is self-compassion enough. If it doesn't land and you don't have this powerful experience or gentle experience, and for you it's actually quite gritty and edgy, that's okay. Just the intention of being here and asking is so wonderful. I often think of my husband, and if I went to him and he was struggling, and I said, is there anything I can do to support you? He may not be ready to ask for my help, but just me offering it, the intention of being there to support means so much, and we can be that for ourselves. So again, take a deep breath in and breathe out. And just give it one last time. Is there anything you can offer me in how I could support me, which is you? Or is there anything you need? You might even offer it to your body parts if there's particular areas struggling. Mind, what do you need? Tummy, what do you need? Foot, what do you need? Right, Neck, what do you need? Now, as you've done this, I hope that you have been kind and non-judgmental and non-critical. But if you are, I still want you to see this as a win. The check-ins can be so rich even when they're bumpy. Okay. So we're going to slowly open our eyes. We're going to bring our awareness to what's around us and come grounded into the present again. And I hope that is the check-in you needed. I hope that you got to explore your needs, which are important and they're not, nothing to be embarrassed or ashamed of. It's okay to have needs. In fact, it's normal and natural and healthy to have needs. We all have them. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I hope you are doing well. Before we finish up, we are going to do the review of the week. This one is from Jess Rabon, 621, and it says, amazing podcast. I absolutely love everything about this podcast. I could listen to Kimberly talk all day, (laughs) and her advice is absolutely amazing. I highly recommend this podcast for anyone struggling with anxiety or any mental health professional that wants to learn more. Thank you so much, Jessa Rebon621. I love, 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 love your reviews. Please do leave a review. I am trying to get to a thousand reviews and I will be giving away a free pair of head, Beats headphones to one lucky winner who leaves a review. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I will see you all next week. Please note that this podcast or any other resources from cbtschool.com should not replace professional mental health care. If you feel you would benefit, please reach out to a provider in your area. Have a wonderful day and thank you for supporting cbtschool.com.